All right, the deadline has come and gone for a long-term contract extension for the guys who were franchise tagged this offseason. And the two big names, Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs, both not able to come to a deal on a long-term extension before the deadline. So they will have to play this season on a one-year $10.1 million tag Fully guaranteed, of course, but it sounds like both of these guys are in it for the long haul. Neither are expected to show up when training camp opens up here in the next week or so, and neither are expected to show up for the preseason. We're looking at possibly all the way into week one, if not longer, for both backs. And honestly, I don't blame them. Both these guys are in the prime of their career, and they can't seem to get a real contract it is now over 700 days since a running back has gotten a long-term extension worth over $10 million. The one-year franchise tag's not doing it for these guys, and I don't blame them. Running back is a super marginalized position, and the problem is the stats don't lie. You pay a running back a lot, you don't win football games, i.e. you don't win the Super Bowl. Not a single running back since 2010 has made over $3 million. It's just a lot of average dudes that you don't need to spend money on. But these guys are game changers. Josh Jacobs, the best season of his career, honestly saved Josh McDaniels his job in Las Vegas. They were horrendous. That team was dog shit. He was great. All pro first team, all pro running back was the best running back last season. And it's the only reason the Raiders didn't only win four games. Like, he would have been fired. He's a terrible coach. You need to pay this man. He's also in the peak of his career. He's 25 years old. Give this man a four-year extension and you can dump him when he's 29, which seems to be when running backs start falling off that cliff. So you don't even need a huge guarantee here. You don't need a super long-term extension. Josh Jacobs is as solid as they come. Now, everyone's going to say, well, the mileage, this, that. We see what's going on with running backs. These guys are impact players. Ask Daniel Jones how he feels about having Saquon Barkley in his backfield. The Giants, absolute joke. You're going to pay Daniel Jones $40 million? Nobody on this earth is paying Daniel Jones $40 million. Not even his mother, okay? But you had to break out $40 million because he, you like the way he looks and he kind of reminds you of Eli Manning, except he's just kind of super mid. Oh, he won a playoff game against the worst defense in the NFL last year who couldn't stop a friggin' nosebleed. And it was Saquon Barkley who changed the tide for this offense. Carried a lot of the load last year. Looked like his former self. We know he's dealt with a lot of injuries, but he was in peak, peak form last year. Had a monster season and was really the difference and only offense that the Giants could rely on. He was such a pain in the ass to deal with. Catching the ball out of the backfield, blocking, running. It made life easier on those terrible receivers and that super mid-tier quarterback. So I hate the move by both these teams. They don't seem to get it. I know quarterback is a valuable position. But man, when you have a game changer at running back, it's okay to pay him. You can pay a little bit of money for him. You didn't need to give Daniel Jones $40 million. You could have gave him $33 million. Nobody else would have paid that. And then you could have maybe gave Saquon three years, $12, $11 million, and it would have all been good. Your window is right now if you're the Giants. And if you're the Raiders, you're shit, dude. You're getting fired. You're not winning anything. Your team is dog, okay? You have Devontae Adams wasting away there. Pay Josh Jacobs. You might win some football games. If his ass doesn't show up this year, you're not winning anything. You're getting fired, and his value goes up. Now, nobody has held out since Le'Veon Bell, like truly held out since Le'Veon Bell got the tag in 2017 and missed the entire year with the Steelers. He was never the same again. But again, hey, he got $28 million and fleeced the Jets for a couple of years, only played in 17 games. So it worked out for him. But all in all, man, I hate the way the teams are handling the running back position. I get it that they are marginalized. There's a lot of dudes there. But we got to get this shit fixed. Maybe there's a separate pool, maybe different contracts on the rookie contracts, not so long guaranteed. For, you can't have a four-year slash fifth-year option for first-round running backs. Maybe only running back contracts are two years coming out, and if you play right away, you can then get that second contract and a nice chunky number to get paid because these guys deserve to be paid with the production they've put up. Now, they've had some nice paydays as first-round picks, but it's really not the same, man, when you get that second contract. And honestly, we can all go back and look at these contracts, how they've blown out. Zeke Elliott in Dallas killed the running back contract. 
That was the worst contract arguably ever given to anybody that's not a quarterback. And it just set everything back. Everyone saw him fall off a cliff. He got paid early. And now everyone is super gun shy. Christian McCaffrey has a decent contract right now. And people are a little hesitant, but he's been very, very productive when he's been healthy. And I guess that's the risk when you're starting to get up there into 26, 27, 28. The wear and tear starts getting on you. You're having 300-pound grown-ass men running full speed hitting you 15 to 30 times a game, depending on your load you get during the game. So there is a risk there. There is a concern. The question is, are these guys going to show up? Because if Barkley doesn't show up or Jacobs doesn't show up, these two teams aren't winning a lot of football games. I don't think they're winning a lot of football games regardless. But, man, you can't have guys like this sit out. Now, maybe eventually they kind of come to agreement like, hey, play this year under the tag and we'll have an extension waiting for you at the end of the season. A little wink in the nod. But who trusts any of these owners? They're all a bunch of sleazy liars anyway. Who would trust those guys? I certainly wouldn't. I would seriously consider sitting out if I'm Saquon Barkley. This and just show them forty million dollars, Josh, uh, forty million dollars, Daniel Jones. Show them how shit that decision was, how mediocre and bad this team is without you playing, and really send a message across the league like, hey, I am worth this contract. Hey, I am valuable. I can make your dick quarterback look better. And Josh Jacobs, screw Josh McDaniels, man. Don't play for them. I know Vegas is cool and stuff. The Raiders, awesome organization from like a historic standpoint. But man, F that guy. He's garbage. Nobody likes him. Shouldn't be a coach in the NFL. He's a Tom Brady merchant. Don't play for them. Just sit out. Somebody will sign you. You're still a young man. It's just stupid. But the other running back, Tony Pollard, also tagged. Didn't come to a long-term extension. But he is going to show up. He is going to play under that $10 million tag. And he seems like his recovery is coming along. Obviously, his market wasn't quite there for him. He blew out his ankle in the NFC Divisional round. So he is coming back from a leg injury. He was set to make a pretty nice payday, I think, this offseason entering for them. But, hey, it is what it is. You got to play through the injury. And if he's healthy, he's been productive. He was probably the best running back on Dallas for the last two years or so. So it should be interesting to see what his impact is for a team that Feels like they're ready to finally, finally get to an NFC Championship game. Have a very good defense. We'll see what the offense can do. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you holding out if you're Saquon Barkley? Are you holding out if you're Josh Jacobs? Or should they show up and play and hopefully get another contract next year? Because you can't really get double tagged. You get double tagged. It's going to be very, very pricey and well worth it for those guys. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Again, like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Share this video with your friends. And I'll see you all tomorrow.